experience where we're grateful to God in spite of everything that we've lost we still got good stuff left over his mercy his blessings and his grace can you believe that in the middle of a global pandemic that we've been able to bless people with three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars in economic support can you believe that just last week we were able to bless 3,000 families with groceries to be able to sustain them. And can you believe that we're still giving? That we want to, in fact, charge you to uh, go get an empty shoebox, fill it with uh, toys and learning uh, material and books. And I want you, if it is designated for a girl, to wrap that box in red. If it's for a boy, I want you to wrap it in green. But I need it on next weekend uh, because it is our intention to be a blessing to 1,000 children around this globe. Come on, partner with us. We are a church that won't stop giving. And as a consequence, you shouldn't stop giving. I want you to give right now because you cannot have thanksgiving without being thankful that you have something to give. All of the prompts are right here. If you know that God's been so good to you, dizzyingly good, that you can't even wait till the end of the service, I want you to drop a seed right now. I want you to sow an offering right now. I want you to partner with us right now uh, because even after all of this heavy worship, God still has something he wants to give to you. And the thing he wants to give to you and your family is this word right here. Uh, this is, in fact, the conclusion of our Don't Rush Challenge, finding patience in the pandemic. I hope that you'll please share this uh, with loved ones, family members, and relatives. I, I want to uh, invite you to the second book of the Bible. It's actually one of my favorites. Exodus chapter 14, verse 11 and 12. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die 
in the desert. I want to preach on this the last Sunday in November. I want to preach using as a subject, don't play with my check. Don't play with my check. There comes an epiphany in the life of anyone caught adulting. That while you are under an avalanche of unfortunate circumstances, just before you are tempted to complain, you mutter to yourself, who cares? The side effect from COVID that not even the vaccine can cure is the fact that somewhere around 42 million people have been rendered unemployed. One of the few things that this administration was able to accomplish in the last congressional session was the passing of the CARES Act. The CARES Act actually stands for Corona aid relief and economic security the cares act this trillion dollar package was touted to provide fast and direct economic assistance for american workers families and small businesses in addition it was designed and orchestrated to in fact supplement American industries. The key word is fast. But 12 million have been holding their bated breath since March 27th, waiting on their check. Now I realize that for some of you, 1,200 may not seem like a lot, but for many, $1,200 is the blood transfusion necessary just to keep a household alive. It, in fact, that $1,200 will stave off the bite of vicious vampire bill collectors who will call your phone in inordinate times, both day and night. The delay is wearing on the nerves of those who were holding out for the promise to come to pass, that they would, in fact, receive that stimulus of $1,200. Imagine if you would, that Dr. King at the March on Washington in 1963 said, as African Americans, we have come today to cash a check that has been marked insufficient funds. And now, over 50 years later, we're still waiting to draw from the account written in the Constitution that all men, all women, are created equal. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm tired of waiting on this check of equality to clear. I'm tired of waiting for it to clear that still there are no arrests in the Breonna Taylor case. I'm still waiting for it to clear because a gross number of black-owned businesses have received absolutely no support while billion-dollar industries and companies like Ruth Chris got it immediately. I'm tired for equality to be cleared in this construct of a quote-unquote post-racial society. But even as it is that our vice president-elect has skyrocketed to the second most powerful seat in the world, she has still been dismissed by others in an attempt to undermine her unbridled intelligence. To make matters worse, if they could, 159 million citizens have already cashed in and nobody has taken a moment to explain why it is 
that 12 million are still waiting. And I don't know how many of that 12 million are locked in and are streaming this morning. But I feel within me that there's a great number of you who are still waiting. And you've seen other people get what it is that they wanted, what it is that they were promised, but here you are still waiting. You've done everything that they told you to do. You've pushed all of the buttons, checked all of the boxes, and you're still waiting. The complaints are mounting to such an extent that the Treasury Department had to give an account as to why there has been such a gross administrative lapse. So November 21st, they issued a report as to why there seems to be a disconnect in so many people's payout. And this morning, it is my privilege to be able to uh, underscore, delineate four reasons potentially why you still don't have your check. I want you to write these down so they can serve as a checklist for you. Write them on the screen. The four reasons why you are still waiting on your check. The first reason, as uh, Polk did on the Treasury Department's website, the first reason why it is that you have not yet received your check, write this down, hear this, is because possibly your address has changed your address has changed and might I go out on a proverbial limb and suggest to you that many of you are not getting what you are waiting for because your address has changed in other words you are not where you used to be you are not at uh, the previous known address. Early on uh, resurrection morning, uh, the sisters got up and brought a collection of spices expecting to meet Jesus at the grave. But he has already risen. He was no longer there. I feel down in my sanctified soul that many of you are not getting what you wanted because you don't even know God has already moved you. You are in a different place emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. I don't know how you feel about it, but you ought to be grateful unto God. I am not at the same address. You used to be able to find me depressed you used to be able to locate me unhappy you used to be able to forward all of my mail to a mansion called miserable but my address has changed so the stuff that used to be sent to me I can no longer receive it and for that you ought to be giving God glory you haven't gotten your check, number one, because your address has changed. Number two, I want you to have this, please. I want you to write it down. The first one, your address has changed. The second one, hear me and hear me well. Your situation has changed. There's a great number who have not received their stimulus check. Why? Because there is a surge in your income. Where you were in 2018, where you found yourself in 2019, is not where you are in 2020 economically. And as a consequence, I've got to tell this to you, you no longer qualify. I know for some of you, this is going to rub you the wrong way, but I got to give it to you. Can you imagine this? You no longer qualify for assistance that God has set you up to get back on your feet you ought to thank God you have gone from beggar to blesser 
that you are no longer asking people for help, but you're thankful that God has provided everything that was needed and necessary. I have been praying for you in route to this Sunday. And I want you to know what I've been praying. And I hope your soul will rejoice. I have been praying that what you've been waiting for, you will no longer need. Say that again for me, Pastor. What you've been waiting for, you will no longer need. I want you to find the kind of strength that even when help is offered, you'll be able to say it not in false humility. I don't need it. Give it to somebody else. How many of you believe by faith that not only has my address changed? My situation has changed. And only 500 of you will shout is that I am doing better in a pandemic. I didn't know how this was going to met itself out. I didn't know how I was going to breathe, how I was going to sustain. But God, can I do a throwback for you? Has helped me to prosper in a pandemic. My address has changed. My situation has changed. Here's your third one. I want you to please have it. Your third one, and uh, some of you have not received your uh, check. Hear this, is because your account has changed. Your account has changed. The feds are using banking information from 2018 and 2019 tax returns for you to get your payment. You should, in fact, be receiving a wire transfer and many of the attempted transfers have gone back to headquarters because the account is no longer active. I need you to know this, that your account is getting ready to change. What do you mean? I'm not talking about transfers I'm talking about testimonies. The account of your life and how you see it is getting ready to change. You used to bemoan what has happened to you, but the account has changed. Now you speak what happened for you. That all things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. One writer put it this way. Instead of saying, why me? Ask yourself, why not me? The Lord had to whisper into the ear of Job. Cannot the same God that rings blessings rain down calamity? I need you to change your account of your life. I need you to, to look at the account of what has happened. You couldn't see it while you were in it. But now that you're on the other side of it, you ought to thank God that God, if I had to do it all over again, it was necessary for me to be afflicted. Because he chastens only those that he loves. The account changed from I had to do it, here it is, to I get to do it. I want you to write that down. I get to go to work when there are 42 million people who are unemployed. I get to chase behind these children when there are so many who have had to bury their children prematurely and a great oasis of people who are unable to conceive. I get to run errands when there's somebody who's waiting for someone else to take them around. I get to pay bills, which means here it is that I am participating in a viable and an active life. Your account of what has happened has changed. And in the book of uh, Exodus, I need you to know that Exodus is nothing more than a handbook 
on hostage negotiations. The book of Exodus is nothing more than a handbook on hostage negotiations. The children of Israel are in bondage to the Egyptians and in every chapter we read, every page that we turn, we discover that all we are reading and reading again is God maneuvering on how to get them out. I need you to know talking to you who's looking at me right now you who are listening to me I need you to know in this chapter of your life God is working on how to get you out of something I don't know where you are but I need you to know that God is orchestrating and conspiring and manipulating circumstances situations and people just to get you out of it I declare and decree over your life that God is getting ready to move you out of dysfunction move you out of depression move you out of disease and move you out of discomfort and move you past the divorce he's got to get you out of it and when we get to our text in chapter 14 Yahweh turns on the GPS and begins to give instructions as to how they ought to get out of it. I want somebody to hear me and I need you to hear me well. Get ready for your road map to redemption. God is not going to just give you a large panoramic view. But he's going to give you picturesque detail as to what you need to do next. That you're going to have to write that book. But you're going to have to start in by writing one page a day he's going to get you back to school but you got to start applying he's going to show you the house you're going to live in but you can't be so puffed up that you don't search out the foreclosed list God's going to get you in that car even while you're upside down in this one he's going to give you a strategy he's going to give you the plan on how it is that you're going to move to the next level of your life. And the Bible says that while he's giving direction, while he's giving instruction, the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. And then the Lord says something that confounded and conflicted me. Watch this, you're not going to believe it. The Lord said that Pharaoh's hardened heart is how I'm going to get glory. You just missed that. The only other time we hear this, I hope you'll be able to pull it together. All I got is the Bible. The only other time he says something as twisted and deranged as that is when it was in reference to Lazarus. That this sickness is not unto death, but it's so I can get glory. Lord, I, I am, I'm tearing, I'm shredding. Exodus chapter 14 apart and I can't figure it out what do you mean that Pharaoh's heart and heart is how you get glory and I'll know who it is but I need you to resist the temptation and not throw your phone across the room please you don't have insurance on that laptop don't break it but God said Jamal say this to the people of God it says I am going to get glory by the people who now want you back. Pharaoh at first released them and didn't think twice, but he woke up with a hard heart and says, I can't let them leave. I got to get them back. And right now you ought to be giving God glory in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car, on your phone. You ought to be shouting that the demonic principalities that want you back can't have you. The reason why you ought to be worshiping is before I would have fell for the okie doke. But I got so much space between my bondage and my deliverance that it doesn't even fe seem appealing to me. I'm grateful unto God that whenever it is somebody who had you bound wants you back it is reflection that God got you out of it. 
because you used to live there. You used to be happy there. You used to be satisfied there. But I'm grateful. That old job couldn't pay me enough. That old circle of friends could not entice me. That uh, a dismissed lover, there was nothing that they can offer me. And I give God glory that they want me back, but I have grown to not want them. Verse number nine, they start to... Uh, coming after the children of Israel the Egyptians do with everything they have the Bible says in verse 9 they came with chariots came with horses came with troops but still couldn't catch them I want to say this and I feel the power of God in this moment the enemy in this pandemic has thrown everything at you but still can't get you death in your family Distance from relatives, wedge with your children, absent from the physical church, laid off from your job, pain in your body, problems in your household, but he still can't get you. After all that I've been through, I still got my joy. I still got my sanity. I still got my peace of mind. You ought to thank God and lay hands on yourself like you're bragging. He still can't get me. Times have been tight, but he can't get me. I've gone through a lonely season, but he still can't get me. They tried to make me reduce my moral and ethical compass, but he still can't get me. I need you to look at verse number 11. Where the children of God are now murmuring to their pastor Moses. It says, have you brought us out here because there are no graves in Egypt? I want you to know that um, most people like promise. But most people hate process. Most people like promise. And most people hate process for hundreds of years they've been trying to get out they finally got one foot out the door and immediately they want everything lush and lavish and don't even understand this is the process to get you to the promise aren't there enough graves in Egypt I want to tell you weren't there enough graves in August Enough graves in September, enough graves in October, enough graves through to November. Why didn't you let me die then? And God is saying, I can't let you die because you still have something to live for. And something amazing happens in verse number 15. I'm getting ready to get out your way. Verse number 15 says, um, the Lord said to them, why? Are you crying out to me? I love this. Why are you crying out to me? The Lord said to the children of Israel. But addresses it to Moses. He says to Moses, Lift up your hand. God help me. Lift up your hand. I, I, I compel, command, and charge every one of you who have acted of your limbs lift up your hand something is getting ready to happen for you while you are waiting lift up your hand while you are in need of that call of that check of that door that opportunity might I say this that closure lift up your hand they're complaining under God and don't even know God is the one who wrote down the blueprint for the strategy. Said, lift up your hand. And here's where I'm trying to contain myself. He said, lift up your hand, Moses. It is going to happen. Here's your shout. Today. Grateful unto God. It's, it's been a long journey. It's been a hard trip. It's been a daunting year. But lift up your hand. It's going to happen today. I, I, I jumped ahead of myself. I, um, I told you that there were four things, four reasons, four 
four possibilities as to why you haven't received your check. The first one, if you've been um, tapped in, the first one is uh, you might not have got it because your address changed. Number two, you might not have gotten your stimulus check because your situation changed. Point number three, hear this. You might not have been a recipient because your account changed. Pastor, I didn't wrote all three of those down. I'm checking them and I'm checking them twice. But you said that there were four reasons. I'm glad you're paying attention. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you haven't logged off. Your account could have changed. Your address could have changed. Your situation could have changed. Hear this? Initially, all checks were to be sent by November 21st. Huh. The address change. Situation change. The account change. But I got good news. Not only did the address change, the situation change, the account change. Here it is. The date changed. The Treasury Department says, if you didn't get it by November 21st, don't give up. Because you're going to get it by December 31st. I'm trying not to shout and run through this building, but I got to tell somebody, give God glory because the date changed. I know you thought you were going to get it earlier, but he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I want to speak prophetically into your life. And while I speak it into your life, I speak it into my own. That between now and December 31st, whatever checks are due to you are going to be released, are going to be amplified, and they're going to be expedited. Checks are coming to somebody's life, to somebody's household, to somebody's business I have no idea how the check is going to come for some of you it'll be in mail some of you direct deposit some of you by cash app but brace yourself whatever check you've been waiting on God knows your address he knows your situation and I'm grateful unto God he knows your account God made a promise. And the one thing I know about my God, he cannot lie. And so I stand firmly that by December 31st, checks are getting ready to hit your life, are getting ready to hit your account, are getting ready to hit your business. Don't play with my check. I need this check. It's some stuff I got to get done some things I got to handle, some issues I got to square up and pay off. Don't play with my check. God said, do you trust me? Do you believe me that by December 31st, the check from that settlement, the check from the disability, the check from that case, the check from your previous job, the check for alimony, the check for child support, the check for severance, the check, here it is, for stimulus is going to come. It's going to come by December 31st. I don't know who this word is for, but I believe it is for you. I'm telling you, checks are coming. I'm trying to release it, but that's what I feel in every decibel of my being. Checks are coming. Come on, I need somebody to write that on the screen. My check is coming. Check. My check is coming. Check me out. My check is coming. I declare my check is coming. And I'm trusting God for it. I want you to lift up that hand with palms open. I want to pray for you. I'm believing by faith that God is going to release the checks you need to finance the vision you have. But God is releasing checks to meet every obligation, to deal with every circumstance. I speak over every lifted hand 
that your situation is going to change. I don't know how many of y'all got a shout about this. I feel in my spirit I need to announce your address is getting ready to change. Your circumstance is getting ready to change. Your account is moving from insufficient funds to more than enough. In this moment, I D-double dog dare you to come into agreement with me in this moment. For those of you who are tithers, this is what I want you to do as an act of absolute faith. Here's what I want you to do. I want you today, because I'm trusting God by December 31st. I want you today to give based off of what it is that God has already given you. What he's already sown into your life. How it is that he's met you right there. That's what I want you to do. I want you to tithe on what he's already done. And I want you to give an offering of expression for what he's going to do. Pastor Lemons, tell me, how, find out for me how many days is it between now and December 31st? Between now and December 31st. How many days do I have left? Between now and December 31st. God loves a cheerful giver. Every tither, you ought to be responding in kind to this word. This word was not for your neighbor. It was for you. I need every person who's in agreement with what God has said. That your address is getting ready to change. Your situation is getting ready to change. Your circumstance. 36. 36 days before this year ends. Here's what I need you to do, an offering over and beyond your tithe. I'm going to challenge every person to give a, a seed of 36. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't deliberate. Don't pause. I'm telling you why you are doing it on Givelify, on Zelle, uh, on text to give on our own secure website. Some of y'all with crazy outlandish faith. Do you know what I want you to do? And I have not asked you to do this in the whole pandemic. I want you to write a check. I want you to send it here to the church. Those of you who are not technologically savvy, advanced, or comfortable, I want you to write a check and I want you to mail it here believing that God is going to do it. Above your tithe, 36. Did you say 36, Pastor Lemons? 36? 36. I don't know why God got me trapped. I just got out of 365 and I'm right back here at 36. I want you to trust God. This is a confirmation. I swear to goodness, I didn't know that. I want those of you who feel like you are in the overflow of what God is doing. Just do that 3650 again. 3650 again. Do it again. We still in 365. I'm trusting God to do it. 36 of you, here's what I want you to do. 36 of you, I want you to join this church. 36 of you, I want you to get saved. 36 of you, I want you to get right with God and I want you to do it now. 36 of you, I want you to come into agreement that God is going to do absolutely anything, including my check, but fail. Come on, join this church. 36 of you, that's all I'm asking. 36 of you, this is a word of confirmation. You didn't even know your soul needed and your spirit required. I want to be your pastor and I want to be your pastor before the year ends. I want New Birth to be your church before December 1st, 31st because he is doing great things. You better tell the enemy, don't play with my check, people. Be exalted, be lifted high, King of heaven. Be glorified. Let all creation testify that your Jehovah, the Lord Most High. So be exalted. Yeah. Be lifted high, King of Heaven. Be glorious.
glorified Let all creation Testify That you're Jehovah The Lord most high And the train of his robe fills this temple. And day and night, I, the angels proclaim, Lord, and they cry, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was in this Come on, say, be exalted. Be exalted, be lifted high. Come on, say, King of Heaven, King of Heaven, be glorified. Come on, say, all creation, all creation, testifies. Then your Jehovah. bow down and as it is in heaven we repeat the sound and we'll never grow tired and we'll never grow old and we'll cry holy holy is the Lord God almighty who was in his Say, be exalted. Be exalted. Be lifted high. He's the King of heaven. The King of heaven. Be glorified. Sing all creations. They testify.
And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. Come on, everybody say it because. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never be defeated. Devil is a liar. God is exalted to so never be defeated. Woo! Never be defeated. Come on, sing the devil is a liar. Come on, sing God is exalted. So never be defeated. I shall never be defeated. Sing the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Never be defeated.
wherever you are, I need you to get up out of your chair. I need you to get a tie, get something right, get ready to wave it. I need you to get your praise ready. Cause God's about to get the glory in out of you in this season. For 30 seconds, I need you to praise God like you really know who he is. I need you to praise him like you really are grateful. For 30 seconds, everybody just go to praise him. Invite your family and friends to this life-changing event.